Hello, it is Friday, October 6th, 2023. I'm Chris Raymond. Welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It is a Friday crossword today, which means a themeless puzzle. And speaking of themeless puzzles, I'm feeling extremely humbled because I've just uploaded to the, um, well, it'll be up in a, in a couple of hours, but I've just uploaded a video to the Patreon of myself solving the um, most recent Bosswords Fall Themeless League puzzle, and it was not, it did not go well. <laughs> I really got incredibly stuck towards the end and just, I, I just, it took me ages. I ended up cutting some time out of the video to make it a bit more watchable. But anyway, if you would like to see me really struggle with the puzzle, you can do so on Patreon. So I guess speaking of which, thank you to everybody who has um, supported the channel on Patreon. It does keep this series uh, going. It does sustain this channel and this particular um, edition of the Daily Solve has been brought to us by William Camtron, Henrik Koskinen, and as always, the indomitable Showmaster and the incredible Horan family. So thank you so much to the five of them, benefactors of the, of the uh, Daily Solve Patreon campaign, who are the ones who are enabling me to post these videos, but also to embarrass myself in the solves that I post for those supporters. So thank you to them. And uh, thank you to everybody who's a patron. Uh, you can find that at patreon.com slash daily solve or in a link in the description field underneath the video. And uh, what else? Um, do subscribe to the channel on YouTube if you've not gotten around to that. That is, of course, a big help. And then there's the Daily Solve Discord chat server, a nice friendly chat community that is also linked in the description field. All right. Having said that, let's solve a themeless puzzle, hopefully one that hopefully one that doesn't give me quite as much difficulty as yesterday's. This is a co-construction by uh, Shukin Bernakel, who is a very experienced crossword constructor, somewhere in the neighborhood of 80 puzzles to her name, and Tom Pepper. So uh, I think we solved a Tom Pepper puzzle just a couple of weeks ago. In any case, uh, he's constructed somewhere, I think around a dozen puzzles, maybe more than that. And it was edited, as always, by Will Shorts. It is a Friday puzzle. There will be no theme. Let's start solving and see what we have in store. Squirts could be, you know, I was going to say oozes, but that's not really the same thing, is it? But that kind of idea of something being spit out, spits maybe, I don't know. Or a little squirt could be a, a child, a little sort of tot or a, I don't know, a tyke or something. Recipe abbreviation. Quite often this is tablespoon, in, well, in four letters specifically, often it'll be tablespoon. Let's try it and see if that gives us anything. This could be tykes. Here we have take a big daring leap to, I'm um, not sure immediately, notices that trouble is in the air, question mark. Sees something, beat it uh, with an exclamation point. So you see this and you might think, oh, it means beat it. It means scram. It probably doesn't because when we have a phrase like this with an exclamation point and it is not encased in quotation marks. Generally speaking, that means we're describing the answer rather than um, defining the answer or serving as a replacement for it or, or synonym. So I wonder if it's an egg, beat an egg. Because that is something that you would be, or a rug, I, I suppose. Actually, strangely, this both end in G. I like egg more than rug. Let's see if that gives me anything. Take a big, Take a big daring leap. and notices that trouble is in the air. Senses something? I don't know, this could be wrong. What's shaken after the instruction? Shake. What's shaken after the instruction? Shake. The instruction shake. Could be, could be an instruction given to a dog. Say shake and then the dog extends its paw. Does that help me with the... Oh, no, I haven't looked at this yet. St. Paul, Minnesota radio station, whose format really should be all news. That makes me want, it, want the call sign to be an anagram of news. Um, W-N-E-N-S-W... I don't know. Is it something like this? I, I have no idea. Maybe... It's a radio station though, so it probably starts with K. I think that's the, I think that's the standard. So maybe it's K new or something. It does start with K. I'm almost certain. So this would be Tykes, probably for little little squirt, little Tyke, a little sort of child. 
So world's sunniest city per the World Meteorological Organization. Oh, that's interesting. Is it Yuma? I didn't know. I had no idea that's, that was the case, if so. But it sort of looks like it, doesn't it? Uh, oh, is it no? Is it is it K-N-O-W? So the, so the word would be no. In other words, you know, news, knowledge, things that you now know. Okay, that could be it. So take a big daring leap is... I don't know why I can't think of any possibilities for that. Beat it is an egg, surely, with an E there. Oh, bungee jump. Right. Okay, there we go. I see. You take a big daring leap off of a off of something high and you uh, attach to a bungee cord. Sushi bar appetizer. Um, appetizer. Is it sesame something? What would be a sushi bar? Edamame, what would be a sushi bar appetizer? Sea cucumber? I'm not sure. Notices that trouble is in the air. Oh, notices, as in warnings. Smog alerts? That's very clever. That's a clever bit of misdirection. You look at notices and you think it's a, a verb, but in this case, it's actually a noun. It's referring to uh, signage, maybe, um, or m maybe a radio alert. Kick out. If you kick someone out, you eject them. To stand in the shadows would be to lurk uh, sinister, in a sinister manner, maybe. That's on me. I'm treating. So, oh no, it isn't that. That's on me. I'm something, presumably. Legal writer and political commentator, blank Mistal. I don't think I know this name. Some debut music projects, for short. EPs? So an EP is a, is a um, extended play record. It's the smaller format record. Um, but even even when not pressing music onto vinyl, it's still common to, to use an EP to refer to a smaller album, you know, sm uh, just a few tracks. Uh, so that could be the answer there. Let's see. Does that help with this? Oh, no, it doesn't. We've already, I already assume that's an I. Bizarre. Wacky, I guess. So that's on me. I'm... I still don't see it. What about this? Give a lift. To give a lift to elate somebody, to make them happy, to give them a lift emotionally. Boba Blank, Star Wars Bounty Hunter, Boba Fett, who's in The Empire Strikes Back. Uh, cut out. I'm not sure. Oh, seaweed something? The sushi bar appetizer. Seaweed. Um, what? What would it be? Simpson, who has caught lip-syncing pieces of me on Saturday Night Live. Oh, okay. I don't specifically know about this incident, but I do remember there was an Ashley Simpson who was a, who was a singer, I don't know, 10, 15, 20 years ago. I honestly don't even remember what the time, time frame on that is. Um, cut out. Flee? to Oh, to cut out, as in to sort of cut and run to flee. Um... Basic training for short could be ABCs. Very basic education for tykes, maybe. Let's see. I'm not sure that's right, but let's see if it works. Voiced displeasure in a way. Yeah, it probably is because this could be booed. That's a way to voice displeasure at a, a concert event, perhaps. Parish priests in Paris. Um, I'm not sure. What would you call a parish priest in French, presumably? I, d I don't think I know that offhand. Let's look at the other nearby clues. Skip day participants. I don't know what skip day is. <laughs> no idea. Skip day. I mean, it's, so skip could be um, a, uh, well, it obviously could mean to, to not do something, to skip it. Um, it can also refer to a big sort of trash, kind of big you know, sort of rubbish receptacle, although that's that skip, I think I've only really heard in the UK. It's probably not the case here. It'd be a funny thing to name it a day after though. Poor sports reaction. Sore losing or something. That doesn't sound good. It could be sore something. Skip day participants. It's funny that it's plural because it, that I assume that means we're going to need an a, to pluralize this with an S. So it's a very short abbreviation. Movie with saloon fights, colloquially. A so this will be a colloquial term for a Western film. 
horse something, horse opera. I actually don't think I've ever heard that before, but it sort of sounds like it could be a thing in the way that space opera is, uh, is, a, is a phrase adapted from soap opera. I don't actually know if this is the case. I'm going to remember that this is tentative, but the horse part, I bet, is correct. Um, sushi bar appetizers. Okay, right. I wasn't sure about the seaweed salad. There we go. Oh, oh, it'll be cures as in this. It'll be the same root as cure it in, uh, in English. So that would, that would make sense. So then poor sports reaction. It's not sore. It's sour or something. So skip day participants, seniors. Oh, this must be a school thing. I, I, I don't think I know it. Curiouser and curiouser speaker. That would be Alice from Alice in Wonderland or Through the Looking Glass. AutoZone, question mark. A lot, as in car lot where you might buy a car or I suppose uh, a parking lot, car park where you might park a car. I guess it could in theory be either of those. Instruction on some packages. Oof, I'm not sure. That could feel so this could be referring to a number of things. Probably food preparation, but I'm not I'm not certain of that. Like good pox posture. If you're sort of standing erect, that would be good posture, I think. Beat it. Something out. Oh, that's funny because we have beat it here as an actual exclamation, uh, is or a, you know, a verbal statement or cry or exhortation. Whereas up here we have beat it without the quotation mark, so it's not something you'd actually say, but here it is. I already forget where that is, right here. Uh, okay, divvy up by percentage of ownership. Something eight, I would think at the end, instruction on some packages. I don't know. Breakneck, rapid, so breakneck speed would be a very fast, rapid speed. Noted example of oligopoly in brief. Is it OPEC? The oil, the organization of petroleum exporting countries. That would be my guess. It's it's essentially a cartel, OPEC. Let's see if let's. I'm just going to look at the crosses and see if I think this works. Blink of an eye, a trice. It'll happen in a trice in the blink of an eye. Um, balls for teens. Oh, proms. Uh, so a ball in the sense of a um, a fancy dance, a sort of social event. Uh, so this would be for uh, teens, high school aged, uh, well, high school students. Um, nothing more than could be mere, so mere two, nothing more than two. And US agency tracking the most possible po popular baby names. So that's interesting. I suppose it must be the Social Security Administration because uh, that would that would make sense. That would be an agency with which you'd register in order to obtain a social security number. So I guess they would be in a good position to track those names. Oh, sour grapes is the poor sports reaction. And that of course derives from Aesop's uh, fable of the, is it a fox? Who wants the, the grapes from the, from uh, the tree or whatever and is unable to, the, the vines, I guess they're out of his reach. I don't know. And he's unable to get them. And uh, he says, oh, they probably weren't probably weren't very good anyway. And that's where we get sour grapes to sort of act like you didn't want the thing um, just because you weren't able to get it. So anyway, beat it, get, maybe this isn't, oh, get lost. Oh, it's not out. Okay. That was, that was presumptuous of me to put out in there and that was erroneous. So get lost, nothing to do with out. Okay, divvy up by percentage of ownership would, oh, pro rata. So if something is uh, pro rata, it would be, um, you'd have a proportional kind of amount of money relative to, as in this case, ownership, or maybe the amount of time you worked, maybe you worked less than a full sort of day, so you'd be paid on a pro rata basis or something like that. Okay, instruction on some packages. I still, I'm not sure what that is. Transportation for a bride train? Because the bridal, the bride's train is the, the sort of long bit that flows uh, on from her dress, um, but also a train is a mode of transportation. So I'm wondering if that's just a bit of a sort of punny double reference there. 
instruction on some packages. I keep looking at this as though I'm going to have a new idea. I don't yet. I don't know. This train could be wrong as well. That's on me. I don't know. I mean, this could either mean I've made a mistake and I'm acknowledging it, or it could mean I'm paying for our meal or whatever. It's on me. But I'm not sure. A prefix with lateral, unilateral would mean you're doing something uh, without cooperating or taking consultation. Uh, the states to Mexicans. Estados Unidos. Unidos. Um, the states to Mexicans. Not sure what we're looking for. Oh, oh, is it just Estados? So so prefix with lateral. I'm not sure, actually. Let's see if this is correct. Distinctive style. Your brand, your distinctive style could be described as your brand. Sign on a sofa in the front yard, maybe. Well, my thought there would be free, to be honest. So I'm not really sure about all of these. Let's let's go back to that one and see if we can build build a new uh, chain here. Uh, distinctive style. Oh, flair. Okay, that works just as well, if not better, than um, whatever I had before. Uh, brand spade for one. This so obviously a spade is a tool. It's a you could use it to um, do some gardening. But I wonder if it's Sam Spade, the private detective, private eye. There we go. There we go. Um, who's uh, was adapted to film on a number of occasions. Part of a teacher's job interview. Um, not sure. Form of attachment, a PDF. So portable document format, which are very frequently attached to emails. Part of a teacher's job interview, D. Not sure. They might drive you to a flight. They might drive you to a flight. I mean, it looks like it's referring to somebody dropping you off at the airport, but I'm wondering if it's... I wonder, it feels like a misdirection clue. This would have an S. Let's see. Time capsule events. Um, so I wonder if this is referring to kind of digging up a time capsule that's been buried in order to be retrieved in the, in the future but I'm not sure what we're referring to here. Preferential treatment favor. So if you're, you know, if you're operating something sort of without favor, you're not giving preferential treatment to anybody, but of course you could do the opposite. They might drive you to a flight. Fears? Oh, your fears might, might drive you to flee. So flight is sort of fleeing. That could be it. That could be it. Uh, city where the con conquistador Pizarro was assassinated. Uh, Lima, Peru, I would think. That looks very plausible to me. So part of a teacher's job interview is a demo class or a demo, I don't know, something, but it sounds right, it's, or a demonstration of some skill or ability. Okay. The states to Mexicans. I, I must just not know this word. I mean, saying the states rather than just states or the United States makes it seem like this is an informal way to refer to the U.S. And I don't think I know it, so I'm going to keep going. Keyboard abbreviation, ESC for escape. Encircle within, pen, pen in. This doesn't look very good, though. Instructions on some packages. Maybe this isn't train. Maybe this isn't pen. Maybe neither of these is correct. I don't know. Okay. Uh, Chloe Gong novel, Blank Violent Delights. These violent delights, perhaps, quoting Shakespeare. Let's see if that works. Minor change. Mm. Part of a teacher's job interview. Some holiday entrees. Hams? 
Ham is, is often sort of showpiece, kind of centerpiece family meal. Fabric made from wood pulp. Rayon? I don't think I knew that, but it looks like it fits, and I would believe it. Minor change. Oh, as in money sent. A, a scent would be minor change. Stir up would be foment. Part of a teacher's job interview is, oh, a demo lesson, I see. Okay, the states to Mexicans. Oh, El Norte, the north. That makes complete sense. Oh, I, yeah. Okay, so it was a sort of familiar colloquial way to refer to the United States, and that makes total sense, and I just didn't think of it. Time capsule events. Oh, burials. So not not when it's dug up, but when it's initially buried. I wonder if I even said buried before and didn't didn't think of this possibility. Much desired spot at a concert. Front row seat. Seems likely. So prefix with lateral is unilateral. So I guess this is train, the transportation for a bride. What is this, though? That's on me. I'm to blame. Oh, bizarre is wacko, not wacky. Right, okay, yeah, that didn't even occur to me to question that. Okay, well, that was that, was that I guess. I don't even know if I think I shouldn't have necessarily put that in because, whack, yeah, I don't know. I just wouldn't have guessed, but there we go. It, it does work, so it's perfectly valid. That's on me, I'm to blame. Encircle within, hem in, okay, very similar to pen in, has a, a similar sort of implication, but um, it's a different phrase, so there we go. Instruction on some packages. This end up. Oh, divvy up by percentage of ownership. It's pro rate, right? So pro rata would be you know the adjective you used to describe it. But if you but divvy up is a verb. which says I am going to divvy this up. I am going to pro rate this. Um, then it will be you know you could say it would be paid pro rata or something. Okay, so there we go. So this end up on something fragile or heavy or, or complex that is packaged. Gets warmer, say, near. So if you're playing hot and cold and you're saying, oh, you're getting warmer, you're getting warmer, you're nearing the, the thing in question as opposed to getting colder and getting farther away. Friction to a physicist. Uh, friction to a physicist, not sure. Uh, its state symbols include the white pine and the chickadee. Oh, uh, I don't know. I just need to think of a, the main, maybe, in five letters. Let's let's see if that works. Does some coursework. So Mose is in uh, Mose the uh, the grass of a of a course of a you know maybe a race course or something. Friction to a physicist. Force if, is that is friction considered a force? Let's see. Expert with tips. Expert with tips. Experiment subjects, so to speak. Guinea pigs. Uh, often um, often refer to people who are being put in a, uh, in a sort of new, untested situation as guinea pigs, presumably because guinea pigs were, were or are, I guess, commonly used for testing. I'm not sure. Um, Nikki Reed's role in the 2003 film 13. No idea. Don't think I recognize that name or the film. Dual sport could be epe, so fencing, sword fighting. A bit of bio data could be your age, simply you know biological information about you. Expert with tips is an advice uh, something, an advice columnist or something. So EV, I guess, is the role in the film. Sure, doesn't does not ring a bell for me. Expert with tips, advice. Um, I don't know. I mean, there's the phrase agony aunt, which, but advice aunt, I don't really, haven't really heard of that. Um, consideration for NCAA eligibility. Uh, oh, well, this is the collegiate kind of sports authority. So maybe GPA, grade point average. Maybe you need to maintain certain academic performance in order to participate in collegiate sport at that level. Perennial with yellow flower clusters. I don't know. Archaeological site, uh, a dig, a what? I'm not sure. AAA, BBB, etc. informally. 
Um, I mean, these are organizations, so it's simply orgs. I think that's what the Automobile Association of America and the Better Business Bureau, I think those are. Okay, hold up to rob somebody, to hold them up, uh, to steal from them uh, at, you know, at the threat of violence, I guess, specifically. Archaeological site is a, I don't know why I can't see what that is, kind of signal and the perennial, right? Oh, front row seat, front row. Yeah, okay, what is this? Perennial with yellow flower clusters. Oh, advice guru. I should have looked back at that. So, oh, an archaeological site could be a ruin. Oh, is it tansy? That, that sort of popped into my mind, but I thought, am I confusing that with pansy? Is there, is, are those two separate things? They, they must be. So a kind of signal is a busy signal. And then, there we go. All right, that was the Friday puzzle. A bit of a tricky one, I think, uh, on this Friday. Lots of very subtle misdirections. So what are, what are some examples of that? I mean, take a big daring leap. It sounds like... It's being used metaphorically to refer to making a big decision of unsure outcome. Uh, but nope, it was literally to take a big daring leap. This one was very, very subtle. Notices that trouble is in the air. That notices being a, um, uh, a noun rather than a verb was very, very clever. Uh, there were a few of those sorts of things. And I, th I do think of those as being a hallmark of, of Friday crosswords. So uh, there we have it. A good, uh, somewhat tricky Friday crossword by our co-constructors today. And I enjoyed it. Um, gave me a good good challenge. Hopefully you enjoyed it as well. Let me know how you fared with this one in the comments or the uh, Discord server. Always curious to know. And that's that for the puzzle. I will be back tomorrow for the Saturday crossword. Should be a trickier one than this. That's usually how it goes. So do join me for that. But until then, please do have an excellent remainder of your Friday. Take care. Mm -hmm.